from the WJLA Broadcast Center. This is ABC7 Breaking News. We begin tonight with breaking news in the investigation of the murder of pregnant mother Jesse Davis of Ohio. Police have made a second arrest in this case now. They have arrested an unidentified woman on an obstruction of justice charge. We have no word on her connection to Davis or the suspect, Bobby Cutts. Search teams found the body of the pregnant mother yesterday, and today an autopsy confirmed it was Davis. Police quickly arrested her boyfriend, Bobby Cutts, on two counts of murder. Authorities yesterday evening searched an apartment of an unidentified woman. Now, she is reportedly a high school friend of the suspect. No word if she is the woman under arrest right now. An upstairs neighbor says officers were looking for the comforter removed from Davis's home. Cuts is set to be arraigned tomorrow, and as for uh, how Davis died, that's still a mystery tonight. The medical examiner says it might be difficult to pinpoint a cause because of the advanced state of decomposition. And now, top story tonight. No sign of a man accused of luring a little girl into an apartment and raping her. Prince William County investigators have warrants out for a Dale City man accused of sexually assaulting that eight-year-old girl, and police believe the most recent attack happened in an apartment complex on Westminster Lane. Angela Stark is live at police headquarters in Woodbridge tonight with details. Well, Leslie, Prince William County investigators have three arrest warrants out for 43-year-old Kwame Boateng, including an arrest warrant for the rape of that eight-year-old girl, but police have not been able to find him and make an arrest. Prince William County investigators say the alleged rape of the eight-year-old girl happened here at Dell Force Apartments on Westminster Lane in Dell City. According to police, 43-year-old Kwame Boating is wanted on several charges in connection with the case, but has so far eluded police. Boating is a native of Ghana, and the news has shocked the African community in Prince William County. We Africans, there are, things, there are certain lines we don't cross, and to rape an eight-year-old girl is a taboo. Isaac Ammo is operations manager for Global Foods Warehouse in Woodbridge. He says the African community is very tight-knit. Uh, we socialize more through our churches and then also where the places that we do our groceries and buy our specialty food, which we run over here. But obviously, such, this is a very negative news to us. Police say the abuse may have begun when the victim was as young as six years old. The latest incident happened Friday, police say, when Boating lured the eight-year-old into his apartment by telling her he had pictures of her. During the weekend, police searched for the suspect, but so far they have been unable to find Kwame Boating. Now, police say Boating may be driving a 1995 tan Nissan Altima. If you have any information, you are asked to give the Prince William County Police a call. Live in Woodbridge, Angela Stark, ABC 7 News. Angela, thanks so much for that. Well, a frightening scene on the crowded Atlantic City boardwalk today. A fire broke out in a building that houses eight stores, destroying at least five of them. The flames also damaged the State Casino Control Commission headquarters. No one was hurt. Investigators suspect homeless people living under the boardwalk may have accidentally started that fire. Beautiful today outside, but we do have some changes heading our way, and you're going to feel it right as you step out the door in the next uh, 12 hours or so. Joe's here with the forecast. Joe. Uh, that's right. The tropical flow is beginning to invade the area from the west and from the south, and let's take a look at our live Super Doppler radar, and you see the result uh, overhead. We have a few sprinkles trying to reach the ground. A lot of this rain is probably not reaching the ground, but Leesburg may have had a sprinkle with a temperature now of 79 degrees, and Ashburn, you could expect maybe a little shower. Poolsville, nothing significant, as you can see. It's all pretty isolated and pretty small. Temperatures are running in the low 80s and upper 60s at the present time. Uh, another shower moving in just west of I-81 and northwest of Sperryville. Take a look at our weather bug quickly. 78 degrees at Damascus, dew point at 55, but that will increase. And we'll see temperatures climb tomorrow into the upper 80s, mid to upper 80s tomorrow. Also noticeable, the humidity getting a lot stickier tomorrow. Details coming up in a few minutes. We'll see you then, Leslie. All right, Joe, look forward to it. Police in the district are looking for clues now after an early morning shooting in crowded Adams Morgan. Investigators hope someone saw something that will lead them to a suspect. Richard Reeve is following this developing story. He's live in Northwest tonight. Richard. Leslie, as you know, Adams Morgan is like two separate neighborhoods, one by day and one by night. Even at 3 o'clock in the morning, these streets and sidewalks are crowded with people. And the notion of a shooting here has a lot of folks concerned. Police sealed off the corner of 18th and Belmont early Sunday. It's just not a surprise, but it's just, 
It's a sad has to happen here, yeah. They are investigating a shooting that began as a scuffle. I know there was an argument. And it just uh, evolved into a gunshot. Restaurant owner Alan Popovsky is among those voicing concern about the 3 a.m. shooting. It's part of a bigger problem in our society with people carrying guns when they're going out. The victim, a man in his 20s, was wounded in the back, shot as he tried to flee. It's frustrating to know it's not safe. And, you know, it makes you worry, you know, you're just going to get have it more and more. The gunfire comes six months after D.C. police began increasing patrols in Adams Morgan and elsewhere. Literally, there's cops on every corner. There's cameras and there's people out here. Many here don't want to return to the bad old days. When you're looking for trouble, I guess it's fairly easy to find. This surveillance video from January of 06 shows a shotgun-wielding thief holding up a Columbia Heights 7-Eleven, wounding the clerk. A week later, a 35-year-old man was beaten into a coma outside an 18th Street parking garage. Maybe greater police presence after 2 a.m. And it seems like something always happens right around this corner. So maybe they just need to pump up the police presence. Now, police say they've added 18 extra officers on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights. That victim, we should tell you, is now in stable condition, non-life-threatening injuries. Police right now say they have no suspects in this latest shooting. Live from Northwest Washington, Richard Reed, ABC 7 News. Thank you, Richard. Four people were seriously injured today after a three-car crash in St. Mary's County. The Sheriff's Department is investigating what caused the cars to collide on Patuxent Beach Road and North Patuxent Road in California, Maryland there. One patient had to be flown to the hospital. Three others were rushed by ambulance and all are in serious condition. We have new details tonight in a convenience store fire in Fairfax County that happened last night. Investigators are now calling it suspicious. Firefighters say they found Molotov cocktails at the CVS on Silverbrook Road in Lorton. That explosive set fire to a high-pressure natural gas meter. It took 30 minutes to get that fire under control last night. The CVS store suffered some heavy smoke damage. Acting D.C. Public Schools Chancellor Michelle Rhee is building a transition team now. A 30-year-old advertising executive from the Washington Post will head it up. Jenny Abramson previously directed program strategy at Teach for America. That's an organization that places teachers in underserved areas. She's just one of the young education specialists that Rhee is recruiting for her team. The developer behind the National Harbor Project in Prince George's County wants to improve customer service in the industry. Gaylord National is funding a hospitality and tourism institute. A $1 million grant will fund the programs at, at Prince George's County Community College. Gaylord officials say they're in investing in the workforce. The company plans to start hiring in January. Well, up next here on ABC 7 News at 6.30, no claim of responsibility yet in a deadly attack on UN peacekeepers in Lebanon. Also coming up, the farewell tour for British Prime Minister Tony Blair and a look ahead for what that means for the U.S.-U.K. alliance. And still ahead, it's the fiercest debate in our country right now. What to do about illegal immigration? We'll have the latest coming up. You're watching ABC 7 News at 6.30 on your side. Five U.N. peacekeepers are dead, killed in a bombing in southern Lebanon. The U.N. troops were patrolling the Lebanese-Israeli border at the time of the ambush. Spain's defense minister says the dead include two Spaniards and three Colombians. Lebanon's president called the attack an attempt to destabilize the country. Hezbollah also denounced the bombing. Saddam Hussein's chemical weapons expert faces the same fate as his deposed leader. Chemical Ali has been sentenced to death by hanging for genocide and crimes against humanity. Ali Hassan al-Majid and two Iraqi army commanders were found guilty of the 1988 mustard gas attack on Kurdish men, women and children accused of trying to overthrow Saddam. Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice is in France now in hopes of forging an alliance with the new president there to end the violence in Darfur. Rice says in Paris today that the word has fallen down, the world rather, has fallen down on the job of stopping the ethnic cleansing in the troubled region. Rice said the Sudanese government will also be called upon to uphold its agreement to allow a larger international peacekeeping force there in Darfur. After 10 years in power, British Prime Minister Tony Blair is stepping down this week. At his Labour Party conference, Blair announced the man taking over for him. Gordon Brown is promising some sweeping domestic reforms and a new focus on international policy. Brown says he believes that fighting terrorist extremism will take more than military force. It is also a struggle of ideas and ideals. 
that in the coming years will be waged and won for hearts and minds here at home and around the world. Prime Minister Blair officially steps down this Wednesday. This week, the Senate will take up the issue of immigration reform once again. A compromise reform bill failed in June, but with a push for President Bush, it was resurrected. A test vote is due this week, and 60 senators are needed. ABC's Bob Jamison has more. The attempt to reform immigration policy continues to divide Americans. Illegal citizens here are chosen over American citizens, especially us black American citizens in our own black neighborhood. What's left of it? And proposals to fix it continue to divide the U.S. Senate. And it's practical because it will work. This bill will not achieve that vision. It will not work. The Senate's attempt this week to make it work again could be difficult. Even senators who supported the first legislation are distancing themselves from predicting the outcome this time. Uh, you know, I'm not committed to voting for the final product. The wheels may come off, but I'm committed to trying. Everyone agrees there's an urgent need to secure borders and deal with the 12 million illegal immigrants in the country. This is a national security issue, and it has to be dealt with. But if this comprehensive bill fails, opponents want to see it broken up into smaller measures to deal with thorny issues like so-called amnesty and the rights of families to immigrate versus merit-based immigration. So I don't think this is a good bill. We need to go back, reevaluate it, and create something we can be proud of. The Senate debate begins again Tuesday. Tuesday, there will be a cloture vote on the motion to proceed. It will ripen on Thursday. We'll see if between the two parties we have 60 votes. Bob Jamison, ABC News. Still to come here on ABC 7 News tonight, get ready for the dog days of summer. Joe is back with the changing forecast for us next. Plus, these amazing pictures from our neighbors to the north as Canada cleans up from some wild weather. Check out this amazing home video out of Canada. Yeah, storm chasers captured this massive tornado in Manitoba. It's one of three twisters that touched down in that area on Friday. Now, fortunately, no one was hurt, but the powerful storms left 15 people homeless. And they also damaged cars, blew trucks right off the highway. You can see why. Extremely large wide storm there not pretty amazing video yeah, isn't it it just it amazes me every time i see a tornado funnel I, what, yeah. what amazes me the most are all those storm chasers that go after them go chasing after them. yeah go after time and time I'd again stay away from the strongest winds i try yes. my best to do that <laughs> okay all right all right we're talking uh, humidity that's right it's going to start building winds are beginning to shift around from the south from areas down to our south so that's blowing humid air this way but first let's take a look at our live super doppler 7 radar and we do see a few little green echoes on the old weather map there if we zoom in or just north of Leesburg where they had a sprinkle. Quantico reported a little sprinkle a little hour ago, and some of those sprinkles are drifting to the southeast. Further to the north, around Middletown at Frederick, a few little showers. Some of these showers may not even be reaching the ground, but if you see a few sprinkles on your barbecue, that's probably where it's coming from. Further off to the west, way out west by Route 81, we have some showers and moderate showers around the Woodstock area and just to the south south showing up in the red and yellow but in general they're widely scattered as we take a wider view see most of us are basically dry and the showers are sliding to the southeast so have to keep a shower or two passing overhead in the forecast for the evening time virginia beach 79 degrees in the time lapse you can see the tide go out and uh, not a bad day to start at the uh, beach during the course of the day and checking a few other sites we see that we do have some increasing clouds pass over Leesburg, 74 degrees and then they darken up and a few sprinkles from some of those darker clouds. Nice shot from Sterling of those passing clouds. 78 degrees, a mixture of clouds overhead, and then checking, of course, the beach. Great day at the beach, 70 degrees, 2.63, so they're a little humid, but then they're sitting right on the water, aren't they? Let's take a look at view overhead and take a look at what we have. Our weather radar shows that pattern of rain sliding to these, and the future cast of where the rain is gonna go basically says, yes, we'll see some sprinkles over the district during the next few hours. You can see the pattern in the airflow coming out of the northwest, dry from, say, uh, say Baltimore northward up through New York State and then we see that arcing pattern is going to continue for us and that means a good chance of some showers brief passing overhead this evening and then once again tomorrow we'll have a repeat of a chance of some showers especially in the afternoon 
And we'll see highs tomorrow, not in the 90s, but it's going to feel like the 90s because of the humidity. And then we go up to 88 degrees on Tuesday, 92 on Wednesday. And isolated thunder showers, a possibility each one of those days as summer starts to turn on the valve and pump in the humidity. <laughs> yes. Okay. We're not really looking forward to that. But no, okay. we're not, but we'll, that's summer here in D.C. We'll take it. All right. Nationals feeling a lot better today. Oh, uh, Jack Cordero got a second chance. The Nationals suffer a key injury in today's game against the Indians but the news wasn't all bad. How about this play by Christian Guzman and Ronnie Belliard? We'll show you what other tricks were up the national sleeve next in sports. It's time now for ABC7 Sports. What a difference a day makes for Nationals closer Chad Cordero. Last night, the Chief gave up a three-run homer in the ninth inning, which cost the Nats a victory. This afternoon, Cordero would get his chance at redemption. Wizards forward Karam Butler threw out the first pitch. Karam was trying to get the crowd all fired up for this monumental occasion. And look at this throw. Oh, are you kidding me, Karam? What was that? Stick to basketball in the second. Look at this defensive play. Christian Guzman with the diving stop. The glove flip to Ronnie Belliard. Belliard with the backhanded grab and the stretch for the out. What a play. More on Guzman in a moment. Bottom of the second. Backup catcher Jesus Flores delivers the base hit. This would give the Nats a 1-0 lead. Flores also had an RBI ground out. Top of the fifth, Jason Simon Tachi makes his only mistake. Franklin Gutierrez homers to left center, cutting the lead to two to one. We go to the ninth, just like last night. Chad Cordero has a two-run lead, but this time the Chief gets the job done. Johnny Peralta flies out to end the game. The Nats win the series with a three to one victory. Manny Acta didn't hesitate in giving Cordero the ball with the game on the line. Ask and you shall receive. That's what I asked for yesterday, and, um, and we got it again today, and, and Chief bounced back like he's done before, and, and our bullpen, you know, got it done today. The news wasn't all good for the Nats. After the game, shortstop Christian Guzman was placed on the 15-day disabled list with a sprained left thumb. That's a shame because Guzman is batting 329 this season. The Orioles are trying to win their series against Arizona, but things aren't going too well. This is Diamondbacks pitcher Doug Davis slapping the base hit. Chris Young scores. Right now, they're in the sixth inning. The O's are losing 6-1. to one. Here's a shocking and tragic story. Former Major League reliever Rod Beck was found dead yesterday by police. They were responsible responding to a call to Beck's home in suburban Phoenix. The cause of death is unknown. Beck spent 13 years in the majors starting in 1991. He played for the Giants, Cubs, and Red Sox. Beck was a three-time All-Star. Rod Beck was just 38 years old. Joe Gibbs Racing is trying to sign driver Tony Stewart to a two-year extension that will run through 2011, but there's speculation Stewart could leave General Motors for Toyota. Stewart says those rumors aren't true. Stewart's current deal runs through 2009. What a finish in the Gold Cup final. The U.S. scored the tying goal in the 62nd minute. Then in the 73rd minute, Benny Failhopper delivers this blast for the game winner. The U.S. comes back to beat Mexico 2-1. to one. It's their fourth gold cup title final round of the travelers championship in connecticut bo van pelt did not win the tournament but he did have the shot of the day it came on the par 3 16th hole and look at this two bounces and it rolls into the cup for the hole in one this tournament came down to a playoff on the first extra hole jay williamson hit a terrific approach shot but hunter mayhem does williamson one better look at that williamson missed his putt mayhem made his hunter mayhem earns his first pga tour victory now that's something tiger woods would do see a great shot and say you know what I can do better than that. Yeah, I can do a little bit better than that. Just get it and right. And usually with Tiger, he does. And he normally does. We're coming right back. <laughs> little change coming our way in the weather. That's right. Humidity will build and temperatures will slowly climb. 87 degrees for a temperature tomorrow afternoon under somewhat cloudy skies. A little bit of sunshine and cloudiness mixed. But with that, we have to throw in about a 30% chance of an isolated shower here or there. And that sort of trend will continue Tuesday, Wednesday, and into Thursday. Then things cool down after that. Not bad. Not too bad. No. Not bad at all. Looks like it cools off by next weekend. That's important. If we can go ahead and look that right. far ahead. Thanks for joining us tonight. We hope to see you back here at 11 o'clock for ABC 7 News at 11.